Hey guys, Austin here, how's it going? The fall anime season of 2021 is in full swing, and if you are still on the fence about what to watch, I'm going to go over each show I'm currently watching without any spoilers, and just give you my overall first impressions of each show, and tell you if I think it's worth your time or not. I'm not keeping up with everything because I'm a human being and have a life, but without further ado, let's start with the first show, and that is... Sakugan. From first glance, this series gave me Gurren Lagann vibes and after the airing of its first three episodes, it definitely delivers that. Think if Gurren Lagann was based around a father and daughter duo. That's what this is, essentially. While it's similar, it doesn't blatantly steal anything, and more so replicates the hype and feel, while showcasing a relatively fresh story and setting of its own. For the most part, I really like the two leads here. Mimenpu, which for some reason sounds like the name of a Pokemon to me, has an adventurous outlook on life and higher than average intellect, making her a pretty useful character when the plot needs her to be. However, her feisty rebellious side can come off as a tad bit annoying at times, thinking she's smarter than everyone else and just doing whatever she wants. So unfortunately, this leads to her fair share of unlikable moments in these episodes, but I do foresee her going through some character growth and learning to listen to her elders a bit more in the future. Gagumber is her loving father. All he wants is for his daughter to be safe from the harsh, kaiju-infested world they live in, and will stop at nothing to do so. He doesn't share Mim and Pooh's adventurous attitude, and instead wishes he could keep on with his everyday routine, but is willing to step out of his comfort zone if it means Mim and Pooh will be happy and live out her journey-filled dreams. Also, this dude deserves dad of the goddamn millennia for putting up with Mim and Pooh's shit. That's all I'm saying. The dynamic between them with the flip of a coin can switch from wholesome to... Oh my god, you're like the worst dad ever. But these two flawed individuals always seem to work it out, and I think their bond will only strengthen as the show goes on. As it stands, I would still say Sakugan is worth a watch, even if only to see the super dope mech versus kaiju battles. That is all. Now moving on to Platinum End. This is the latest adaptation of work from the minds of Takashi Obata and Sugami Oba. Before this series, us weebs were graced with their previous masterful works, Death Note and Bakuman. So the announcement of this got me hyped. The question is, does it succeed and stand proudly next to those series? Nope. But it does succeed in being entertaining as all hell. And I would be lying if I told you I wasn't enjoying every second of this extremely exposition-heavy edge fest of a show. It's like a mixture of Death Note and Mirai Nikki. And the reason for comparison are pretty clear, but this show doesn't reach the heights of either one of those. And it isn't much more than balls to the wall shock value. I haven't really mentioned the characters yet, primarily because as of this point, there's not really much to say. The main character, Mirai, is the only character to really be focused on so far. And the other ones that show up, we only know anything about from the regurgitation of dialogue from either him or his guardian angel, Nase. I would say if you need something to feed your inner angst, Platinum End serves up an entertaining shit show for you to enjoy on its surface value story and characters. But don't go in expecting too much, as you'll probably be disappointed. And also this angel has dick wings. So there's that. But if you want to watch something that's actually good, let's get into... Tactop Destiny. Uh, funny story about this one. If you happen to watch my preseason video, you would know I wasn't necessarily excited for this one. I realized I was in the minority shortly after filming that video. The synopsis of monsters taking over and banning music from the world, with warriors rising up to defeat them with the power of music, to me sounded like the plot of a direct-to-DVD kids film. Oh no! The D2 are attacking! What are we going to do? Don't worry guys! We can defeat him with the power of song! <laughs> and even though the powerhouses of Studios Mappa and Madhouse were behind it, I was skeptical and wasn't planning to check it out. Seeing the rather large hype train online for the show surprised me somewhat as most of it was aimed towards the god tier animation quality. And in my defense, good animation doesn't always equal a good show. <coughs> Say yo. Mm. Excuse me. But nevertheless, the positivity made me put such judgment aside, and I checked it out anyway. Needless to say, I was severely wrong. Not only does the animation deliver and make both my nuts implode simultaneously, it at the same time presents a very unique setting with an engaging enough story to keep me wanting to come back each episode. 
I feel invested with the plot so far. The mains here, Tact and Destiny, are both shrouded in mystery. But the series does a brilliant job of slowly revealing more about them and how they came to be in the position they are as a pair who fights to bring music back to society. And unlike with Platinum End, where the concepts are cool but not much more than that, Tactop continues to take already fascinating concepts and make them cooler with every chance it gets. But as fun as this show is, it's not my personal favorite of the season, we'll get to that later. We still have a few more to get to before that. Blue Period Initially from the first episode, I wasn't completely sold on Blue Period, despite being interested in checking it out from the get-go. Not sure why, but it just didn't hit the way I was expecting it to. Since then, it has become one of my favorites of the season. The following episodes have proven to be exactly what I was looking for from this show. I love how it presents the whole follow your dreams message. Seeing Yatara, the main character, discover painting and pushing himself to the next level with each obstacle he encounters is inspiring to say the least. Even being only a few episodes in, I feel like I know Yatara so well. As someone who dabbles in various arts myself, the struggles he goes through are very relatable. As for the other cast members of the show, there hasn't been a ton as it seems to be primarily focused on Yatara's story and how the people around him affect him and his journey to being a better artist. Although his fellow classmate Ryuji has been given a small amount of significant development as well and I'm sure there will be more to come. So I'm looking forward to that. I have heard great things about the manga and in my opinion if things continue on the current course, this anime could be one of the standouts of the year. If you want some feel-good, motivational type of shit, this is the show to check out. Now on the side of things that have yet to meet my expectations, Amame, Warrior at the Borderline, is the series I was most excited for this season, as I am a big fan of the mecha genre. In particular, the ones that are of the Gundam-esque variety. And it only took the promotional art to make me blindly decide to check it out. It hasn't quite reached the mark of my pre-excitement. I can feel it slowly working its way to becoming its own, but as it is at the moment, it hasn't done much to stand out in the mecha genre. The hand-drawn, slickly designed mechs are much appreciated and very nice to look at though, and a few of the concepts and plot points seem to be set up for something much greater down the line. It definitely hasn't bored me in any way, just hasn't done anything to blow my mind, as it's a bit of a slow burn. But I am keeping my fingers crossed, because I do think it will break out of its copy-paste style and discover its own identity. There's not much more to say about this one really. I'd say as of now, it's not necessarily worth your time, but hey, it very well might be later on. Now if you really want to watch a good mecha series from this year, check out 86. But I'm not going to talk about that. Moving on. The Faraway Paladin It would be an understatement to say I'm not much of an isekai fan. While I don't hate the genre, and there are some that I've enjoyed in the past, it's a genre that doesn't necessarily call to me, and has been oversaturating the anime sphere for quite some time. Based on the info provided beforehand, it wasn't made clear that this show even was an isekai, and really the show doesn't take that much of its time to shine a light on that side of the plot either. It doesn't start with truck Coon taking another victim, it just starts with the main character Will already reborn into a fantasy world. And unlike something like Mashoku Tensei, where it constantly reminds you that the main character is an isekai protagonist, this show does not, and more so hints at it at times. That aside though, the show is fairly decent, and is getting better with each episode. It started off kind of slow, with Will being trained by three undead beings, and watching them train him was kind of nice, but that only seems to be the tip of the iceberg of what this show is going to bring. But now that that's all out of the way, my personal favorite show of the season is... Tesla Note. This show is amazing. Alright, alright, I'm just fucking with you. My favorite show of the season is... Comey Can't Communicate. Despite its popularity, I am not someone who read the manga for this one. And because of that, I wasn't fully sure what to expect. All I knew is that it would most likely be really good. And I was 100% right on that. This series so far has made me feel so many emotions with what really is just a small sample of what's to come. It's hysterical in one moment and you're laughing your ass off, and then the next moment it's so fucking wholesome. Oh, and if you were searching for waifu material this season, I fucking found it, my boys. Comey is adorable and must be protected at all cost. Okay. Just had to let that out. Comey Can't Communicate deals with social anxiety, which is something that I used to struggle with as a kid. Comey's inability to form sentences around other people is played up for laughs, but then it's paid off in a beautiful way when her classmate Tadano tries his hardest to just help her make friends. I really love this show, 
And you know what, who actually knows how far this adaptation will go, considering its source material is still currently running. But if for whatever reason it doesn't animate the full journey, I know I'll be seeking out the manga to continue this fantastically heartfelt story. So that's that. That is all the anime I'm keeping up with this season. An honorable mention would be Osama Ranking. While so far I haven't personally started watching it, I have heard amazing things about it. To rank the shows I've mentioned here today, obviously at number 7 is Amame. That's the only one I said that you shouldn't be watching. Just waiting for it to wow me. At number 6 we have Platinum End. This one is still a very hard maybe. It's really not a great show, but hey, it's a hell of a fun time. At number 5 we have The Far Away Paladin, a show that has so far been really slow, but I really think it's going to come to bring some great things. At number 4 there's Sakugan, just an insanely entertaining show about a father and daughter fighting kaijus in a mech. Love this shit so far. At number 3 I have Blue Period. This one's a great motivational piece. I just feel good watching it, so I really can't recommend it enough for that. At number 2 I have Tacked Up Destiny. The show that I really didn't think I was going to like for some reason has just been a fantastic ride with mind-blowing animation. And at number 1 I have Comey Can't Communicate. For its flawless mixture of comedy and heartfelt moments, it really is something everybody should be watching. Down below let me know what you're watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. That would be awesome. And I will see you guys next time.